I just want to welcome you to this video. This video is being recorded during the time of lockdown. And in the UK here, over the last three years, we've been hearing about Brexit. It's been on everybody's mind. It's in the news. It, it's all you hear about. Now everything's changed and all we hear about is coronavirus. But both these things are related. In Matthew chapter 24 and verse 7, Christ said that one of the signs of his soon coming would be that there are viruses in the land, pestilence in the land. And he said this is something that would increase more and more as we get closer to the time. Now in Daniel chapter 2 verses 42 and 43, Daniel there describes a prophecy which says that the nations of Europe, although they try to come together, they won't be able to, that they will, will fall apart. And this is what we see happening. Even this coronavirus has caused a little bit more of the European nations disintegrating as they get to a time when they're fighting against each other. And this idea of European unity seems to have just gone astray completely. Daniel chapter 2 and verse 44 says that in those days, God will set up his kingdom. Now, you've heard people saying for many, many years that Jesus will soon come. At some point, he has to come. And perhaps enough prophecy is being fulfilled now to tell us that Christ will soon be here. In this message, we want to look at the world's deadliest virus and see what exactly that means for us. The coronavirus was first isolated in 1937 when scientists were looking into the cause of an infectious bronchial virus that was infecting birds and had the potential to devastate entire flocks of poultry. In the 1960s, coronaviruses were identified in human nasal passages as being the cause of the majority of common colds. The corona in coronavirus comes from the crown of projections that emerge from the surface of the virus. The virus is known as a novel coronavirus because it is something new or novel. The official designation is now coronavirus disease of 2019, which is shortened to be COVID-19, whereas the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, or SARS, was the original coronavirus, or COV-1. 100 years earlier, a sickness that became a pandemic was spread by soldiers returning from the front lines of the Great War, World War I. Many countries suppressed or self-censored the news of this deadly virus as it slowly made its way around the world, then mutated and travelled back to the countries that it had already hit. This pandemic came in three distinct waves, the second much worse than the first and the third wave not as bad as the second. However, Estimates vary that between 18 to 50 million people died as a result of this pandemic. That was more than the total number of people which had died in World War I itself. It appeared as a form of pneumonia and the Italians named the cause as the influence or la influenza. This particular strain, similar to the later bird flu, was called the Spanish flu, due to the fact that Spain openly reported the spread of the virus. Spain, being a neutral country during World War I, did not have reporting restrictions, and when the king, Alfonso, caught the virus, the story was nationally reported throughout the country. Over the last few decades, there have been a series of viruses of this type. From the Spanish flu of 1918, which was also a form of Asian flu, came the Asian flu of 1957. SARS emerged from 2002 through to 2004 or 5, 
bird flu emerged in 2003 and continued through till 2007. And then in 2009 there was swine flu, MERS in 2012 and the Zika virus in 2016. As with all pandemics, COVID-19 began with a patient zero. That is, the first person identified as having the virus. Patient zero may well date to November 2019 when a bio-accident occurred, possibly in the Wuhan Institute of Virology in China. Doctors there had been researching the pathogenic biology of bats carrying viruses that could cause cross-species infections, such as Ebola and SARS. Indeed, between 2003 and 2004, three separate SARS outbreaks emerged from Chinese laboratories. On the 18th of November in 2019, the laboratory in Wuhan started advertising for scientists to research the relationship between bats and coronavirus. By the 24th of December, another advert had appeared, which referred to major new infections having been discovered similar to SARS and SADS, the sudden arrhythmia death syndromes. All of this was before there was any acknowledgement of the COVID-19 outbreak, and after an outbreak of pneumonia-like infections was being dealt with by doctors in Wuhan. Certainly, there was a lot of denial at the time. On the 30th of December of that year, Dr. Li Wenliang messaged fellow doctors about an outbreak of a SARS-like infection and warned them to take precautions. This was quickly denied by the Wuhan Municipal Health Commission, which stated that there was no obvious human-to-human -human transmission. This was despite the fact that two doctors were already suspected of having contracted the virus. Two days later, Dr. Li Wenliang was issued with a summons for spreading rumours, and a further two days afterwards he signed a statement of acknowledgement and declared that he would not commit further unlawful acts. Seven others also received summonses. At the same time, the Hubei Provincial Health Commission ordered that all genome testing of samples was to stop and that all existing samples should be destroyed. Early January 2020, the Chinese National Health Commission ordered institutions not to publish any information regarding the unknown disease. The Wuhan Municipal Health Commission released a statement confirming that there was no clear evidence of human-to-human -human transfer or, indeed, of medical staff infection. The infection continued to gain pace in the city of Wuhan, and it was claimed that the outbreak centred on a local wet market, that is, a place where game and wildlife is openly sold for consumption by humans. The suggestion that the infections originated from the preparation or handling of unclean meat, a bat or perhaps a snake who had eaten a bat, or perhaps maybe a pangolin, however, one third of the infected patients had not attended the market in question. Whatever the origin of the virus, it has spread across the world at an alarming rate. Particularly, it was spurred on by the fact that the Chinese New Year had arrived. By the middle to end of January, there were many days of Chinese people travelling to and from China to celebrate the Chinese New Year. The increased rate of travel helped the spread. It was the one time of year when Chinese people tend to go home to their families or go and visit other people. And as there were no restrictions people were taking the infection from town to town with them. In Taiwan, it was reported that human-to-human -human contact was spreading this virus, but still it was denied. The effect of the COVID-19 virus was given in a report by the Director General of the World Health Organization on the 17th of February 2020, when he said... 
more than 80% of patients have mild disease and will recover. In about 14% of cases, the virus causes severe disease, including pneumonia and shortness, or shortness of breath. And about 5% of patients have critical disease, including respiratory failure, septic shock, and multi-organ failure. In 2% of reported cases, the virus is fatal, and the risk of death increases the older you are. Since that time, the number of cases have spread around the world at an exponential rate. Now more than 3 million cases have been reported around the world. The virus continues and is a virus that is deadly because in some places, not just 2%, but up to 10% of those who contract the virus are killed by it. But as frightening as this may be, the Bible speaks of a much more deadly virus, one that has a 100% mortality rate. This virus also began outside of humanity. The story of patient zero is found in the book of Ezekiel. The New Life version of the Bible renders it this way. You were the cherub who kept watch and I placed you there. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked among the stones of fire. You were without blame in your ways from the day you were made until sin was found in you. Through all your trading you were filled with bad ways and you sinned. So I have sent you away in shame from the mountain of God, and I have destroyed you and driven you out from the stones of fire, O cherub who kept watch. This was the account of the sin virus being discovered in the cherub, in the angel Lucifer, and his isolation to the planet Earth. The prophet Isaiah continues the story in chapter 14 and verse 12 of his book, where he says, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? The sin virus spread to humans through contact with an unclean animal, in this case a snake, where Lucifer, now as Satan, used the serpent to influence the first inhabitants of this planet. We are told the story at the beginning of the Bible in Genesis chapter 3, and in verse 1 it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Initially, just as with the coronavirus infection, the deadly effects of the virus were denied. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Genesis chapter 3 verse 4. A. G. Daniels, in his book, The Abiding Gift of Prophecy, tells us, This wrongdoing brought incalculable woe upon Adam and Eve. They lost the sweet, satisfying innocence that had been theirs. They lost the beautiful garment of the righteousness of God which had clothed them. The virus of sin entered their hearts, and they were filled with all unrighteousness. All the deadly evil into which the human race has plunged during six thousand years existed in embryo at that fatal hour of disobedience, ready to give birth to the mightiest effort possible for the defeat of the divine purpose. In her book Patriarchs and Prophets at page 63, Ellen White says, The fall of man filled all heaven with sorrow. The world that God had made was blighted with the curse of sin and inhabited by beings doomed to misery and death. There appeared no escape for those who had transgressed the law. 
angels ceased their songs of praise. Throughout the heavenly courts, there was mourning for the ruin that sin had wrought. So both viruses sprayed through contact or proximity with someone who was already infected. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 6, we read of the next infection that comes along. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Paul tells us in Romans chapter 5 verse 12 that, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. You see, whilst COVID-19 has a 2 to 10% fatality rate, the sin disease has a 100% fatality rate, and the entire world has been infected. Paul again in Romans chapter 5 and verse 18. So then, as by means of one act of transgression, sentence came upon all men unto condemnation, even so, by means of one righteous act also, the free gift came upon all men to justification of life. In Romans chapter 6 verse 23, Paul says, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the last verse is the answer to this question that must be on everyone's mind. What can we do to avoid the effects of this virus? When it comes to the COVID-19 virus, the first and most important advice that has been chanted like a mantra is to keep clean especially to wash hands regularly. The second piece of advice is social distancing, to keep away from others, especially if you are of high risk. In other words, keep it to yourself. These are standard measures that should apply to all diseases. For example, covering the mouth when coughing helps to prevent the spread of the disease. We remember the old saying, coughs and sneezes spread diseases. So it is that with the sin virus, keeping spiritually clean is very important. In chapter 1 and verse 16 of Isaiah, it says, Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes, cease to do evil. In Jeremiah chapter 4 and verse 14, it says, O Jerusalem, this is speaking to God's people, O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. How long shall thy vain thoughts lodge within thee? So, keeping the virus to yourself is important, that is, don't spread it to others. Jesus enunciated this very clearly in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 19 when he said, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Once again, the mouth is the key to controlling the hold of sin on us and on others. James chapter 1 and verse 26 says, If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. James goes on to say in chapter 3 verses 5 and 6, even so, the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. 
so is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. In verse 8 he goes on to say, But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Peter states it this way. In 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10 he says this, For he that will love life, and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. Here we are told that it is the mouth that can do the greatest of damage. Therefore, we have to have control over what we say. Now, whereas no cure has been found for the COVID-19 virus, there is a way to treat the problem of sin. With COVID-19, there is held out the hope of herd immunity. That is, that if enough people catch the virus, there will be a strength of immunity that means the virus will die out. For the sin virus, there is a promise of immunity for the life that is hid. In Christ Jesus. In 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7 it says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. For COVID-19 there is the race to develop a vaccine. One type of vaccine is what's called the convalescent plasma, a technique whereby the blood of those who have survived the virus is used to harvest the antibodies that are in their blood cells. In the Los Angeles Times of the 20th of March 2020, University of California in Irvine virologist Michael J. Bushmeyer described this as a little-known medicine with ancient roots. He went on to say, it's not a new idea, it's a very old one. Indeed, it is an idea that stretches back to the beginning of time. The vaccination for sin is the blood of Jesus Christ. The only preventative and the only cure available to humankind. Because there is power in the blood of of the Lamb. In Revelation chapter 1 and verse 5 it says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. In the General Conference Bulletin of October 1899, Ellen White wrote, Regardless of nationality, race or colour, without measuring the depths of sin to which the soul has been degraded, the call is made for men and women to keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. By his Holy Spirit, God proposes to call out a people from the midst of this last generation of sinners. In these very persons in whom the virus of sin has become so strong, in spite of all that heredity, habits, environment, and all that Satan with all his angels can do, God is to perfect a work of grace which will result in their standing on Mount Zion. God is calling out a people during this time. He is calling out a people to separate themselves, to be immunized to be covered in his blood so that they will not be affected by the virus of sin any more. Christ's blood offers safety from the deadliest virus the world has ever known. Have you been vaccinated from sin? Are you taking the antidote for the poison of sin? Is it any surprise that the sales of Bibles has increased dramatically during this time of global crisis? People are running to the book of God to find out the cure, the salvation 
that can be found in Christ. Today I am here to assure you that there is a cure for the sin virus, and the cure is Jesus Christ. So I want to ask you, have you got that vaccination? Are you covered in the blood of Jesus Christ? Because that's the only solution to the problems that we have in the world today. The only solution to the problem of sin is to be covered with the blood of Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you this morning, whether you've done this before, whether you've never surrendered your life to Christ, I'm going to ask, let us, not you, but us, let us surrender our lives to Christ today. You may have done it in the past and you feel that you've stepped away from Christ. You may have been thinking of coming to Christ and you know that at some point you've got to make a decision. Well, let it be today. You may have never considered it before, but you recognize that things are not the way they should be in this world and that now there is an opportunity to surrender ourselves, to allow Christ to come into our lives, to drive us, to change us, and to be covered with the blood of Christ. We are so thankful that this sacrifice was made, that Christ decided from the very moment that the sin virus came into our world, that he, our God, would be our Redeemer. And so it is that he came and he died on the cross for me and for you. And if you and I, if we had been the only patients, the only ones that needed treatment for this virus, he still would have shed his blood because there is power in the blood of the Lamb. So let us accept that blood today. Let us take that vaccination today. Let us surrender our lives to Jesus Christ. I'm going to invite you where you are just to pray with me, to take a moment to pause in life and talk to God. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the precious blood of Jesus Christ. We are so thankful for the sacrifice of your Son, that he came to this earth, that he went on to the cross, that he spilt his blood so that we may have salvation. We thank you for that gift. And today, Lord, we want to open our hearts to you. We know that in Revelation chapter 3, you said that you are going to the doors of our hearts and knocking on that door and we know that you've been knocking on that door every day but today especially we want to open the door of our hearts to you we want to invite you to come in to sit with us to dwell with us to remain with us so lord as we surrender self we pray that you will take self away and fill that empty space with your holy spirit we thank you, Lord, not just because you are the mighty God, but because you are a God who delights to hear and answer prayers. And we recognize that right now you are answering this prayer. So bless us, we pray you. Take away our sin. May our unrighteousness be clothed in Christ's righteousness. And we thank you for the privilege of being able to call ourselves sons and daughters of God. Rest, remain and abide with each one of us, we pray, in the precious name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray that you will take this message into your heart, that you will keep Christ with you from day to day as your salvation, as your shield, as the strong tower that you run to, to be safe from everything that's happening in the world today. May God bless you, everyone. Stay with him. Amen.